Hello everyone, Kanasa here, and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. This episode is going to be slightly shorter than a usual episode in this series, even though they're already shorter than they already were, due to a multitude of factors, some of which are to do with the episode itself, and some of which aren't. For example, me now having a job, so I do not have anywhere near as much time to put effort into these. Another reason as well is I have, well, I <laughs> spent far too long working on a video that hopefully should be releasing over the next couple of the weeks, next couple of weeks even. It is a KSP related video and it needs a script and it needs a lot of editing, so it might take a while, but that should be quite fun when that releases. Anyway, what we are going to be doing in this episode is expanding the factory. The factory must grow. We are playing Factorio in Kerbal Space Program, apparently. And this, this is why you don't use landing guidance anymore, because landing guidance just does wobbly things like that. Sorry, I went off on a little bit of a tangent there. But no, we are going to be expanding Aldrin Base, which is the surface base that I set down at the end of the last episode. Currently, it has a couple of factory modules that are going to be able to produce new parts and specialized parts material kits, and all of the nice stuff that we do need in order to start building stuff on the surface of Armstrong. It's going to be fabulous. But in order to do that, we need storage modules and we need to connect all of the parts together. So that is essentially what we're going to be doing over the course of this episode. These tubes that we have sent down, I did design those in a live stream. The tubes module. And essentially, these were going to be the parts that connected all of the different parts of this surface base together. However, I was encountering a few problems with the crawler crane that we sent down in the last episode as well. As you can see, when I turn the magnet on, things get a little bit wobbly. So what I decided to do here was undock one of the tubes and see if that helped us out. It did not. We just end up spinning out of control and flinging this tube all over the place. And I spent the good part of maybe 30, 40 minutes trying to actually get this to work. And unfortunately, it never did. But this does beg the question. This could eventually lead to some sort of fantastic trebuchet catapult idea. Say if we have some pesky kerbals that we no longer like, well, we can just grab them with this crane and fling them off into deep space like that. However, that was a bit of an issue with the surface base, and it does mean we are going to have to rethink how we're going to connect things together. And <laughs> I've just gone with the flexi tubes. The flexi tubes are great. It's apart from USI where basically you can get a Kerbal out and you can connect two of these docking ports together if they are within 50 meters, I believe is the, the parameters for those to work. It means you don't have to bump things right up next to each other. You can just leave something in the near vicinity of the base. So you still need to get quite close, but you don't have to you know, do all of the fine tuning and fiddling around with docking things on the surface that you would do otherwise. It makes it a little bit easier to set all of this up together. However, I personally don't think it looks as good. We can see one already connecting two of those tubes together. And there we go, we've just done another one. I prefer it when you've got these kind of stable structures actually connecting everything together because I think that looks a lot more awesome. It is obviously more difficult to do. I have done it before in both the old Coming Home and in Kerbal Gets Real the next millennia and that is something that we probably will do at a later point in this series. Maybe the next big surface base that we send down somewhere once we have unlocked the new USI Atlas parts that might be something we do look into and it probably means I'm gonna have to spend a long time in the space plane hangar or the VAB trying to fiddle around with heights of docking ports so that they should actually match and also developing some kind of system that will connect them all together. A little bit like the gantry that I had in the next millennia. That will be a lot cooler and we might do another surface base down on Armstrong with those new big parts, although I'm more feeling maybe we should go to somewhere like Ash, which is the furthest moon in the road system, or maybe even go back to Lua because it has been quite some time since we went to Lua and it would be nice to have a base on a world or, or a moon even, it's a, it's a moon of road that has an atmosphere and see how different it is going to be to set down a base on somewhere that has sky and and clouds and you know all of all of that kind of rubbish stuff that you get with an atmosphere. Anyway what we are doing now is we are trying to land Aldrin's ginormous silver balls although that is a little bit of a misnomer. 
because they are no longer silver balls. They, they are just rather large silver tanks. Yeah, they were originally going to be ball-shaped because obviously fuel is, is, is best contained in the balls, as everyone does know. But I decided to go for this instead due to the fact that these were kind of more fitting. I could build this around this shape a little bit better than having those giant silver balls. And what this is going to be is going to be a area that contains all of our liquid storage for the base. So we've got chemicals, liquid fuel and oxidizer, monopropellant and water storage in this module, which is going to be great. Obviously, we do need all of those in order to make this run. Because one thing that someone mentioned in a comment is with liquid fuel and oxidizer, we can make things called transport credits. And that way we can automatically just leave things be moved around the world in the background. I've not really experimented it with it that much yet. I know you need a logistics module, which we already have on there. And obviously we need liquid fuel and oxidizer, which we will be producing. We will be producing that on site. But the ore that we are going to need in order to produce that, well, we're not going to, <laughs> we're not going to produce that on site. We will use USI's planetary logistics function to mine that elsewhere on Armstrong, store it into the planet, and then pull it out at this base. It's a nice system. We've got the rover down on the ground that can kind of maybe say act as the, the kind of transport system that we've got. Anyway, I, I just wanted to show that thing crashing due to the fact that not all of these landings were completely successful. And this is something weird that happened. So I did say there were events in this episode that caused this to be a little bit shorter. Well, the main one was Colin's station just completely disappearing. We flew by it there with this remake of what we just crashed into the ground. And unfortunately, when we flew by, it, it completely changed its trajectory. It changed its trajectory so that it was no longer in orbit of Armstrong, but kind of falling to the ground. We didn't bump into it. Nothing went wrong like that. I honestly don't know what happened, and because of that, well, that took like three episodes to put together. I wasn't happy about that just vanishing and killing, I think, the six Kerbals that we have on board. Oh no, only three Kerbals that we have on board there. That would have been terrible, so I had to load a quick save. And unfortunately, that was just before we originally set down the Silver Balls. Yes. Not very good. So that meant that I had to redo a lot of these silo modules and, you know, do everything that came with that, which was a bit of a shame. Now, this was also really annoying. When you get close to those flexi tubes, well, you have to be close in order to get the attached tube part. Unfortunately, when you leave the vicinity, that disappears. And what happened there was, <laughs> I was, it was a bit of a misclick. Rather than hitting attach tube, I clicked disassemble part which meant that we lost the docking port there. Really not the best. Luckily, however, we did have another two on the side that we were able to connect to the next silo along and kind of make it look a little bit like a chain sort of feature. At least that's how it's looking at the moment, although I'm not sure if I'm going to be adding any more silos because now we have all that we are going to need. We have done our storage solutions. We, we don't need any more. We've got storage for absolutely everything. Now we just need to mine the stuff to put in there. But that will happen in a future episode. I hope you have enjoyed this one. I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.